This program was transcribed from an earlier network broadcast. The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, transcribed and presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In two and a half years, this program has grown to be one of the most popular on the air. Millions of homes tune in every week. To this great home audience, we of the Equitable Life Assurance Society feel a special responsibility. Our equitable messages must be keyed to home and family problems. Tonight's equitable commercial concerns the education of the coming generation. Are there children in your home? Then don't fail to listen for valuable information on the Equitable Education Fund. You'll hear it in about 14 minutes. Tonight's FBI file, The Innocent Witness. There is a feeling shared by many citizens that the current crime wave, the most serious and widespread in the history of the nation is the concern of local police departments and other law enforcement agencies. In part, that is true, because it is their problem. But it's not their problem exclusively. The crime wave is also your problem, and it is shared with you by every other decent, law-abiding American. Because any study of the 5,000 major crimes committed in this country every day shows that the great majority of victims are innocent people. For that reason, it is to your best interest to see to it that your local police department is as strong as possible and as free from corrupt political influence as it can be. In that way, you'll be helping to protect everyone in your community, including yourself. <laughs> Tonight's FBI file opens on the crowded west side of a large eastern city. In a hall in this modest neighborhood, a small dance band is playing music for a Saturday night dance. One of the couples on the floor, young Nick Gonzalez and his girl Peg, are paying much more attention to each other than to the music. Peg. Yes, Nick? What do you think I did during lunch hour today? What? I went looking at furniture. Oh? What'd you see? Oh, a living room suit, all covered with that plush stuff, just the way you wanted it. Was it very expensive? Honey, everything is expensive. Well, yes, Look, but... if we're gonna get married, we gotta have furniture. Oh, I know that. Well, then let me worry about the money, and. Hey, Nick. Nick. Huh? Over here. Hey, honey, look who's there. It's Phil. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's dance over to the edge. Okay. Hiya, Nicky, old boy. Hiya, Phil. Long time, huh? Yeah. Hey, you remember Peg, don't you, Phil? Sure. Hello, Peg. Hello. You know, the last time I saw you, honey, you were playing with dolls. Hey, now, wait a minute. She wasn't that young. When we were in the eighth grade, she was in the fourth, remember? Nicky, I was just kidding. <laughs> Still sucker for a rib, huh? I guess so. Hey, what brings you back to the neighborhood, Phil? Well, to tell you the truth, kid, I came here to see you. Oh? It's, uh, kind of a private matter. Uh, well, Nick, I, I'll let you two talk. Hey, wait, Peg. The bill didn't mean that... It's private, Nick. Uh, I'll go powder my nose. Well, I'll Peg. make it the soda fountain as soon as you're free. Okay. Let's sit down over here, huh? Yeah, we'll grab this booth, Nick. Right. Sit down over there. Okay. Uh, I'll fill you in on why I'm here. Go ahead. Last Sunday, there was a shooting down on 12th Street. Mm -hmm. According to my information, there was one witness to that thing. You were it, Nick. That's right. I also understand that a guy paid a call on you the other day and tried to get to change your testimony. Yeah. You, uh, chased the guy away. Sure. I work for the same fellow who sent him. Huh? Yeah, I'm here for the same reason. Wait a minute. 
Phil, you mean you're mixed up with that... Kid, let's stay with the business at hand, huh? You see, my boss knows I went to school with you, and he asked me to tell you it's very important to him that you forget what you saw. I couldn't do that, Phil. Not even for an old pal? Not for anybody. I saw a poor guy got shot down in cold blood. I saw the two men who gave it to him. They deserved a book thrown right in their faces. Oh, but kid, you don't Look, have... I don't want to hear any more of this. I got to find Peg. I'll see you around again sometime. <laughs> Just a minute. Hiya, Ken. Oh, hello, Phil. Uh, can I come in and see you a minute? Sure, come ahead. Thanks. Oh, nice. Nice little room you got here. Well, that's okay. Uh, I just dropped by, kid, to see if you uh, changed your mind since last night. No, Phil, I haven't. I didn't think you would. Hey, uh... Nice picture of Peg. I tended it myself. Yeah? Nice. Say, uh, what's this I hear about you two? What do you mean? You're gonna get married, is that true? Yeah. Well, why don't you let a guy know these things? Well, I haven't seen you in four years, Phil. Where could I get a hold of you? Ah, that was a rib, kid. Okay. Uh, when are you getting married? Next month. Big church wedding, I suppose. Yeah. All kinds of preparations. Uh-huh. <sighs> you know it be a shame to spoil all that, wouldn't it? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, have something happen that would upset everything. What are you talking about? That shooting you were a witness to. Well? Remember there was a third guy, the guy who got away, the guy nobody saw? Yeah. I just got the word this morning on who that third guy was. It's Peg's brother. What? The brother Jimmy. Now, wait. I is this another one of those ribs, Phil? No, kid. This time I'm leveling. The boss himself gave me the information. Told me to pass it on to you. Oh, I see. He also said to tell you that uh, if you testify that you recognize the two killers, they'll turn around and blow a whistle on Peg's brother. Oh. I hate to hand you one like this, kid. Oh. What can I do? I can't change my testimony. Oh, you can go away. In fact, I got a place all picked out. I could never get away with that. Look, you stay under till the trial's over. Then you cop a plea. Amnesia worked before, kid, plenty of times. Well, when, uh, when do you think I should go? Right now. Several miles away in the same city at the FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is seated at his desk working. A visitor interrupts him. Jim Taylor? Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm Sergeant McAllen, police headquarters. Oh, hello there, Sergeant. How are you? Fine, how are you? Uh, your agent in charge told me to come in and see you. Oh, I see. Well, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you. Now, what's on your mind? Well, I wonder if you remember reading about a shooting that occurred a week ago Sunday. It happened on West 12th Street. Uh, yes, yes, I do. I believe the victim was shot in the back by two gunmen who were later picked up by the police. That's right. We have them in custody now. Mm -hmm. Well, there's sort of an inside story to that shooting, Jim. Really? Now, the victim was a bit of a civic crusader, a champion of clean politics, a good government, you know? Mm hmm Well, we've got reason to believe that he had compiled some pretty damaging information about a corrupt political leader named Smith. I see. And indications are that Smith had this man killed. Well, can you prove it? Uh, unfortunately, no, but we did have a strong case against the two gunmen. Did have? Yeah, you see, the killing was observed by a single witness, and that witness is now missing. Well, what's his story on that, Sergeant? Well, the witness is a young man named Nick Gonzalez. And to the best of our knowledge, he's honest and reliable. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to appear at the DA's office yesterday afternoon, but he didn't show. Well, we went to his rooming house, and he wasn't there. We set up his surveillance, and he didn't come home all night. In fact, he's still missing. Did you check his place of business? Yeah, I hadn't reported for work this morning. Uh, Sergeant, look, tell me. Do you think this man Smith could have gotten to him and bribed him to go away? I don't know. And as much as it's only supposition that Smith is involved, there's no basis for questioning him. Oh, no, that's right. Well, in any case, we believe that there could be an FBI angle. You mean unlawful flight to avoid testimony at a criminal trial? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you checked on Gonzalez's background, his relatives, his friends? Well, he has a girl. He's supposed to marry her next month. Her name's Peg Martin. I'm going over to question her now. Fine. And, Sergeant, let me know what you find out. <laughs> Bill, 
Hey, Phil. What do you want? Huh? I said, what do you want? Where's Phil? He's gone back to town. Who are you? I'm in charge here. In charge? Yes. What are you running here, a prison camp? Very funny. What time is it? A uh, little after two. In the afternoon? Yeah. Hey, how did I sleep so late? How do I know? Where is this place, anyway? Just look out the window. Oh, I can't see anything here but trees. So you're near trees. Look, what I meant is, how close are we to the city? What town are we in? What are you asking me for? You drove here yourself last night. Oh, I was blindfolded. Phil blindfolded? Yeah. Well, let him tell you where you are. But you said he's gone back to the city. Look, stop bothering me, will you? Okay. Can I get something to eat? Yeah, there's food in the kitchen. Swell. Think I'll eat and then take me a walk. Oh, no. No walk. Huh? Phil's orders. You don't leave here. Well, is there a phone here? Yes. Yeah. But you don't use it. Now, wait a minute. Phil promised me I could get in touch with my girl, let her know where I am. You don't use the phone. But she'll be worried. Now, ain't that too bad. You just stay put here till Phil comes back. You got any beefs? Tell them to him. You busy, Jim? No, no. Come on in, Sergeant. Thank you. Did you get to talk to the Gonzalez girl? Yeah, I just left her. Did she give you anything? Well, no, she hasn't seen him either. She was pretty worried about him. She said they had a date last night and he didn't show up. You think she was telling the truth? Yes, I do. Well, could she contribute anything as to where he might be? Well, she did give me one lead, yeah. Oh, what was that? Well, they went to a dance Saturday night, and a guy named Phil Dayton showed up there. Mm -hmm. Uh, He'd gone to school with Gonzalez. And? Well, they went off in a corner and talked, and when Dayton left, the girl said Gonzalez was quite upset. What about? Well, she gathered that Dayton had tried to persuade the boy not to testify. Oh, I see. Oh, Sarge, have you ever heard of this man, Dayton, before? Oh, yeah, he's a stooge for the politician, Smith. Well, that certainly ties in. Yep. Sergeant, look, before we can get in this case, we must be sure the witness has fled and then consult the United States Attorney. Uh, Meanwhile, I'd certainly advise you to question this man, Dayton. Hello? Hello, Peg. Oh, Nick. Yeah. Oh, Nick, where are you? Well, I, I, I can't tell you that. What do you mean? Or what's happened? I had to go away. But where? It's not far, honey. Just one hour's ride from town. Ah, uh, Nick, the police were here looking for you today. They questioned me for almost an hour. What for? It was about you. They think you've run away because of the trial. Nick, did Phil Dayton have something to do with your going away? Phil Dayton? Why well, should he... you told me at the dance that he asked you not to testify. Sure, but I told you then it didn't make any difference. Uh, Look, you've got to come home at once. Peg, I can't. Well, listen to me. My family know about this. They think you've run away, too. If you don't come back, it... Well, it can mean the end of our marriage. Of everything. No. Honey, that's what my father said. But he can't do that. I'm telling you. Look, Peg, I'm doing this for you. What do you mean? Well, I didn't want to tell you, but I've got to. What? I did run away. Oh. I ran away because Phil told me your brother Jim was the third man in the killing. Jim? Yeah, that's why I'm in hiding. Look, honey, I can't talk much more. I had to sneak this phone call. Maybe the guy who's watching is asleep. Honey, wait might... a minute. That killing was a week ago Sunday night, right? Yeah. Well, Jim was home here all night. We all were. Are you sure? My Uncle Ben was here, too, and he's a policeman. That should be evidence enough. Well, sure it should. Peg, Phil lied to me. He must just... Give me that phone. Oh, huh? Told you not to make no calls. Wait, I just found out something. Get back in your room. Oh, no, I'm getting out of here. You're what? I'm getting back to town. No, you're not. (laughs) You're staying right here. We will return in just a moment to tonight's case from the files of your FBI. To every college man, there is no music ever written. 
that can compare to the songs he sang in his student days. On Victoria's football fields, or gathered round the piano in the old Union House. Well, I guess I did my share of singing, Mr. Keating. But I majored in physics. I also had to study pretty hard. I'm sure you did, Jack. And there are plenty of others like you. That may be why the average college graduate earns $72,000 more during his working years than the average American. What's more, that extra $72,000 is just half the story. Educated men and women have cultural interest and appreciation that they wouldn't part with for any amount of money. So for many reasons. Everyone agrees college is the wisest and best investment loving fathers and mothers can make for their children. You're right. I've decided that my boy is going to college if it's the last thing I do. Well, if that's the way you feel, Jack, you'll be interested in an equitable education fund. Equitable education fund? What's that? It's a surefire plan offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society, and it includes these important features. One, you start when your children are young and spread their educational costs over 10 or 15 years instead of taking a licking in four. Two, when your boy or girl is ready for education, the money is ready and waiting for him, right there in the Equitable Education Fund. Three, this equitable plan works whether you live or die. If you're totally or permanently disabled, the fund continues to build up without any further payments. If you die the education fund becomes fully established immediately. That all sounds like just what the doctor ordered. How do I go about starting one of these funds? The man to see is your equitable society representative. Give your children their chance to earn that extra $72,000 by getting in touch with your equitable representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Innocent Witness. Tonight's case in the files of your FBI makes one point which is well worth bearing in mind. And that is that you aid no one when you shield a criminal. The history of the various law enforcement agencies like your FBI throughout the country shows that the number of unsolved crimes is relatively small. So that you're condoning the actions of a criminal and obstructing the course of justice does not help him to escape because there is no escape. All you do is to make it easier for him to commit another crime before his apprehension, and thus you become a partner in that crime. As a decent citizen, you enjoy many privileges, but because you enjoy those privileges, you also have a moral responsibility to your fellow citizens. And the only way to discharge that responsibility in a situation like the one in tonight's case is to call your local police and give them the facts. They will do their part, and you will have done yours. Tonight's file continues at young Nick's hideout. His old schoolmate, Phil, has just arrived from town. Larry? Uh, Right with you, Phil. I'm glad you got here. Why? I've been having trouble. Yeah? What happened? Yeah, I caught the guy using the phone. Oh, that's great. I thought I told Look, you... Look, to... I couldn't keep watching him every minute. Who'd he call? I don't know, but I stopped it quick. Did you hear the conversation? No. Where's the kid now? In his room. I had to belt him. What for? He wanted to blow out of here. Mm. Now, look, what's this all about? Well, we got him here in the first place. Oh, he was a witness that killing last Sunday. The big guy paid to have it done. The boys who did the job declared that unless they beat the rap... They talk. Yeah, I get it. Now I better go in and see Nick. Find out who he talked to. Okay. Hiya, Nick. Oh, you're back. Yeah. I, uh, I thought I'd come out and see if there was anything you needed. I need to get out of here. Oh, now look, kid. Larry just told me what he did to you, and I'm giving him strict orders. That had nothing to... to do with it. You lied to me, Phil. About what? About Peg's brother, Jim. I spoke to Peg on the phone. She said Jim was home all that Sunday night. She had witnesses. Really? Yeah. He just gave me that story so I wouldn't testify. Oh, now, that ain't so, kid. 
I only told you what the big guy told me. You both lied. Now let me out of here. Oh, kid, please, don't make me call on Larry again. Next time he'll use a gun. You stay here until the trial is over. Do you think I'll keep quiet even then? If you do, you're crazy. Look, you can't keep me here forever, Phil. When I do get out, even if it's five years from now, I'll blast you and your boss wide open. Well, thanks for the tip. I'll be talking to you later. Jim. Yes, Sergeant. A Gonzalez girl called me a few minutes ago over at headquarters. Oh? She said that Gonzalez had just phoned her. He told her that he'd run away all right, but he did it to shield her brother. To shield her brother? Yeah. Well, what has he got to do with it? Well, it's Phil Dayton that handed him a story that the girl's brother was mixed up in the killing. And he fell for it? Well, he's just a kid, Jim. The brother had been in trouble before, so I suppose he thought he was being noble about it all. Oh, I see. Well, did she straighten him out? Yeah. But in the middle of the conversation, she heard a man's voice shout something about, get off the phone. Then the receiver was hung up. Did she hear from him again? No. Well, did he get a chance to say where he was? Not specifically. The only thing he told her was that he was one hour from town. Mm -hmm. And did she try to trace the call? Uh Uh-uh. It's going to be a difficult one to locate, Sergeant. Oh, by the way, did you locate this man, Phil Dayton? No, not yet. We're looking for him, though. Well, now that Gonzalez knows the truth, you'll want to come back. But that man who grabbed the phone may prevent that. Yeah. We may have to go looking for him, Sergeant. Have you got any suggestions? Uh, Yes. Let's get a map. Now, if he was, say, one hour from town, that should cover uh, about a 50-mile radius. Yeah. And we'll draw a circle at that point and contact every telephone exchange, see if they have a slip on anyone who's called that girl's number. Hi, Nick. What do you want? Hi. Just went into town. I saw the big guy. Your boss? Yeah. I told him the whole story. I kind of hated to do it, kid, but after all, I worked for the guy. Did you tell him I'd talk no matter how long you kept me here? Yeah. He didn't like that much, but he figured out a way to keep you quiet. He better forget it. It won't work. Oh, don't be too sure, kid. What was the big plan? I'll show it to you. Larry. Yeah? Bring in our company. Okay. Peggy. What are you doing here? I brought her out with me. Oh, honey. Oh, darling. We'll be okay. Want me to break him up, Phil? Oh, of course not. Leave him alone. They're friends of mine. Peg, why did you come here? Oh, Phil called me. He said you wanted to see me. That was a trick. He just wanted to get you here, too. What do you mean? He wants to hold us both. What? He's right, honey. You see, Nick wanted to make a lot of trouble for the man I work for, and I want you to convince him that'd be a big mistake. Now, I'll leave you here with him until he changes his mind. <laughs> Special Agent Taylor. Hello, Jim. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Uh, did you get anything yet from the telephone company? No, no. I got a map full of pins here, but nothing's turned up. Uh, I just went to see Peg Martin. Gonzalez's girl? Yeah. She'd gone out about a half hour before. Mm-hmm. Her mother told me that she'd gotten a phone call from Phil Dayton just before she left. Oh, that's not so good. Yeah, I know. Look, did she tell her mother where she was going? No. As soon as she got the call, she ran right out of the house. Sounds to me like they want to trap the girl, too. Yeah. Dayton and Smith are pretty desperate men, Jim. There's no telling what they'll do with those kids. Sergeant, you better get right over here. I've only got a dozen more exchanges to call. We may get something from one of them by the time you arrive. Larry? Huh? How long would you say they've been in there? Uh, over an hour. Well, that's time enough. Let's go in. Okay. Use any muscle? Don't be so anxious. Go ahead. Bye. Well, you two talk things over? Yeah. What's the verdict? I want Nick to testify just as he planned. You you sure of that? Look, we've made up our minds. It's too bad. Now I guess we'll have to handle things the way the big guy wanted it in the first place. What do you mean? His orders were that we should kill you. What? I was against it. After all, Nick and I are old pals. I asked the big guy to let me try to reason with you, but 
That didn't do any good. Look, is this another one of your ribs? No, kid. I'm sorry to say I'm lovely. Honey, Nick, you can't be serious. Honey, believe me, I am. You'll never get away with a thing like this. Why not? The police know I'm missing. So what? They still find out you're dead. They won't be able to prove who killed you. Well, you're wasting time. Yeah. Well, who wants it first? Nick. Easy, honey. Take care of him, Larry. Oh, 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 Nick. All right. Hey, what is this? We'll be right in, Miss Martin. Oh, it's you, Sergeant. Thank heaven. Thank Mr. Taylor, too. He did the shooting. All right, Sergeant. Hop in there. We'll get those men ready for a trip down to headquarters. Bill Dayton was tried, convicted, and given a 20-year sentence for assault, battery, and intimidation of a witness. His confederate, Larry Hudson, received the same sentence. Both terms were imposed in state court. And so another file was marked closed, and another crime was solved. Tonight's case was closed because a special agent knew what course of investigation to follow, and followed it despite the fact that it was slow, hard work. Now, that is part of the training given to every special agent when he applies to become a member of your FBI. Training which covers a number of months of intensive study in crime solution and also in crime prevention. That ability on the part of every special agent to analyze the ingredients in each case is the keynote of the success of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Success which has brought your FBI recognition as the finest organization of its kind anywhere in the world. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Mr. Keating, what's the best time to start an equitable education fund... My baby's just a year old now. Is that too young? No, Jack. The sooner you start, the lower the cost per year will be. So don't delay. Get in touch with your Equitable Society representative soon. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Big Shot. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight's program was transcribed and the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Big Shot on This Is Your FBI. This program came to you by transcription. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.